can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Hey guys, Matt here. Uh, I know you're not used to seeing me standing in front of this thing, uh, but Ben's on some kind of secret mission. He wouldn't tell me what he was doing. That's just how he is, so we're gonna let that be. Uh, then we're gonna do something a little special. We're not gonna dig deep into something or do a book club or user feedback. Uh, what we're gonna do is show you two episodes back to back that we produced a while back called The Deceptive Brain. It was a series that we were producing and we were going to make an episode three almost immediately after the second one, but it never happened because of some scheduling issues. Well, we got hounded and we wanna thank Marvin B, user Marvin B, thank you buddy. You really, uh, you really made us do this because if it wasn't for you and all the other people hounding us, we would have just kept on trucking with other episodes. Okay, so let me tell you about the first two episodes. Uh, in the first one, we're gonna cover neuroplasticity. Uh, we're gonna look at priming and optical illusions and the framing effect. In the second episode, we're gonna look at hacking your brain and smart drugs, crazy pharmaceuticals that can actually improve your IQ. Uh, in this third one that you're gonna see on Friday, we're gonna look at new technologies and some old technologies that you can actually use to electrify your brain and increase cognition. It's crazy stuff, I can't wait for you to see it. So without any further ado, welcome to the Deceptive Brain series. Here are the facts. For most of human history, civilization was burdened by the cost of communication and the scarcity of information. Today, the problem has shifted. The average consumer is pummeled by an abundance of data, so much so that analyzing everything is literally impossible. Luckily for us, there's one solid piece of hardware that helps us parse through mountains of information and even use past experiences to make educated guesses based on limited data. The human brain. Here's where it gets crazy. Not only is your brain constantly warping your perception of the world, but scientists still don't completely understand how it works. However, we have been able to catch human brains red-handed in acts of deceit. Take the concept of priming. In psychology, priming essentially means that your brain uses past stimuli to inform the way it interprets new stimuli. In other words, your brain uses seemingly irrelevant information to help it guess at the present. In a 2004 TED Talk, Al Sekel demonstrates how our brain's perceptive capabilities can be fooled by optical illusions. This is a type of implicit memory or unconscious connection. Without telling your conscious mind, your brain is using past information to influence the way you perform a task. The examples of this phenomenon are numerous. For one, you're more likely to believe a statement is true simply if you've heard it before. These unconscious connections don't just rely on visual stimuli. In a BBC documentary called How to Make Better Decisions, researchers show that if you are holding a drink when you meet a stranger, the temperature of that drink can affect your opinion of that person. If you are holding a warm drink, for example, you will tend to have a more favorable opinion of the stranger. While these may seem like small hiccups in an otherwise reliable process, the implications carry over into much more than optical illusions and first impressions. Consider the importance of the context in which information is encountered. In what's known as the framing effect, scientists have found that a person's answer to a question depends on how that question is framed, whether it emphasizes losses or gains. Emphasizing losses in a question will result in a more risk-adverse or, hopefully, safer answer. So what does this mean for your day-to-day -day life? Most immediately, it means that the experiences you've had in the past may affect you in ways you don't understand. It also indicates that a great deal of external stimulus far more than what you consciously notice doesn't just affect your decision-making process. It also pushes you towards certain predictable conclusions and behaviors. Mentalists and magicians such as Keith Berry and Darren Brown are famous for their demonstrations of what is sometimes called brain magic, using the processing patterns of the brain to perform feats that may seem supernatural to the average audience member. Taken to a further extreme, the implication here is as disturbing as it is true. It is completely possible for others to influence your decision-making process by manipulating the images, memes, and experiences you encounter. When it comes to how you think what you think, there's something your brain doesn't want you to know.
Here are the facts. In an earlier episode, we explored how the human brain is not always the objective reporter we imagine it to be. Although most of us like to think we're rational, intelligent observers of the world around us, our track record proves otherwise. This may sound discouraging, but don't worry. If other people can hack your brain, that means you can too. Here's where it gets crazy. Whether through drugs, practice, or specific sets of actions, people across the world have figured out how to hack their brains, improving cognitive abilities and even changing their sleep cycles. Through a practice known as polyphasic sleep, some brain hackers attempt to trade one long sleeping period for a series of short naps, ultimately reducing their total amount of sleep. Over the centuries, geniuses like Nikola Tesla and Benjamin Franklin have allegedly hacked their sleep cycles, training their brains to immediately enter REM sleep during short naps. This system isn't perfect. Critics claim the body will always tend to combine sleep into one block of time, and that polyphasic sleep has dangerous side effects. To some brain hackers, avoiding sleep isn't as important as hacking dreams. To this end, they've trained their brains to enter lucid dreaming, typically by tracking their dreams in a journal upon waking, using meditative techniques, and attempting to prime their waking experiences, making it more likely that certain images will manifest in their dreams. But you don't have to be asleep to hack your brain. Due to the Gansfeld effect, human brains deprived of sensory information will consistently amplify the random activity of neurons, essentially triggering hallucinations. This means that depriving yourself of external sensory stimuli will inspire your brain to provide its own entertainment. However, some brain hackers don't want trippy hallucinations. They want a better, faster brain, and they'll resort to drugs if necessary. Although Adderall has become an increasingly familiar product on college campuses, it's far from the only smart drug on the market. Aricept, Modafinil, and Vasopressin have each allegedly expanded the memory or learning ability of users, yet they also carry their own slew of side effects, and it seems the learning pills advertised in science fiction are still a few years away. Yet one method of brain hacking consistently provides proven legal results. Practice. Sure, we've heard that practice makes perfect, but there's a great deal of truth to this cliché. Practicing specific sets of skills doesn't just make you familiar with a subject, it can literally change the physical makeup of your brain. In 2000, researcher Eleanor McGuire found that London cab drivers have a much larger hippocampus than the average person. These cab drivers are forced to memorize thousands of routes in an extraordinarily difficult test called the knowledge, and McGuire's research suggests that this extensive memorization physically alters the brains of cab drivers. Cabbies aren't the only example of neuroplasticity. Studies conducted on Buddhist monks have found that meditation also alters brain structure, and pianists experience changes in brain regions controlling their fingers. These are real-life examples of mind over matter. The mental exercises you perform frequently can drastically affect your brain's function over time, in good and bad ways. This means that every thought you have helps create the person you will be in the future, whether you're memorizing the sprawling streets of London or learning the stuff they don't want you to know.